The best way to fail at indie game development is to never try. But if you never try, you'll never fail, so let's assume you do try. Here's how to fail. So it's time to add some bling to your game. What are we talking about? Art. But you kinda knew that, it was on the thumbnail. Anyway, you know that if you make your game look good, you might sell a lot of copies even if your game is subpar mechanically. Why? Because humans are suckers for eye candy. But art can be really hard, so let's see what we can get away with without actually putting any effort to become good at it. Oh, I know, pixel art. It doesn't take any real skill to do that. I mean, look at this. Unlike all other art forms, pixel art is completely different and does not require years of practice to get good at. So just slap a few pixel art sprites together and call it good. And remember, it's best to save time by doing just the bare minimum. For example, if you have trees in your game, just draw one and copy paste it all over. Got a character with all the movement abilities of Mario? No need to animate him doing all his moves. Instead, just draw him once and squash and stretch. Or just leave him as a blue prototyping shape. No need to draw him at all. Make it look like it's animated and it should be good enough. And you can also skip drawing tile sets. Instead, just use a few basic colors and let people's imagination do the rest. Honestly, art is subjective. So depending on your game, you could dumb things down to just three or four colors if you wanted and just claim it's your art style. I mean, this is a legitimate art style. Why not make it yours? Remember, the goal is to cut corners, not to make things look as good as possible. Speaking of art style, don't feel any need to be consistent. As you learn new concepts in art, or even if you just get bored of drawing things in one particular style, feel free to change it up partway through development. No one's gonna notice. While you're drawing your sprites, be sure to just draw whatever it is with whatever colors you might want. This way, when you finally put a scene or level together, it will look like a jumbled mess of inconsistency. Or, if you're an icky try-hard developer, you could find a nice palette from the massive list of palettes online, or even make one yourself by learning color theory so that your game has a consistent feel throughout. But that might limit your creativity, and we wouldn't want that. When adding elements to your game that the player can interact with, be sure to choose colors so important things blend into the environment. Kinda like that first dungeon in Skyrim, where to continue you needed to probably do something. What did you need to do? Pull this chain. Keep in mind this is one of the first times the pull chain is used by the player in game and if you are new to Skyrim you might spend an insane amount of time not realizing this is what you need to do. I, I mean, probably. Not that it happened to me. I didn't I didn't spend hours backtracking through the whole dungeon multiple times trying to figure out what I missed. I I, I found I found it right away. Besides, this will add a puzzle-like element to your game, which is great. No need to learn color theory to guide players visually. Remember, shortcuts are key. Now, if art is a really hard thing for you, keep in mind there are lots of free art asset packs out there, or even paid ones, and there's nothing wrong with going that route. Except everyone will judge you and think you're weak. And if you use them, don't take any time to search for the right one. Just go for the most common asset packs that have been used millions of times for prototypes and game jams. Don't worry. No one's gonna know. In conclusion, consider the fact that people don't really judge the quality of a game by how good it looks visually. We don't click on thumbnails on Steam or YouTube based on how eye-catching they are. No, we care about content, and games are only ever judged by their mechanics. So honestly, you don't need to worry about all this art stuff at all. And if you follow these instructions carefully, you are bound to succeed at failure. Thanks for watching, and a big thanks to people who helped contribute art this episode. Creo Master for the, the Neon Knights picture, the this one here, and also some people from the Discord who drew some alterations of this guy here. You guys are all um, pretty great. I mean, you're, you're not bad. Yeah, I'm not very good at giving compliments, am I? I probably should, probably should work on that.